It's 2024, people. Congratulations, you made it. Hopefully this year we won't experience a pandemic or a new war or another love letter from DICE. But I know what we will have. A small number of people wanting me to make Battlefield content. Enough people for me to feel like I should keep doing it, but not enough for me to ever feel successful. How fun. Right, let's talk about my best guns in BF1 in 2024. What I've been enjoying recently and finding success with. I'm kicking things off with the Assault class and the much maligned SMG-08. A selection many of you probably agree with. Uh, if you do or not, show me your list of best guns in the comments and everyone can argue about why you're wrong like they will for all of my selections, or at least most of them probably. The SMG-08 is a plague upon the battlefield, akin to the Type 2A from BF5. It's not exactly overpowered as such in any one fashion, it's just too lethal for how much ammo it has. I don't know who needs to tell DICE this, but having a fast time to kill weapon designed for close quarters combat with a bonkers ammo count isn't really going to be good for balancing. Unless you make it totally inaccurate or have it recoil like some of your parents when you bring home your latest attempt at a life partner. But bullying aside, this gun is very good. You see a person, you hold down the trigger, then they melt in front of you. And you see another person, you hold down the trigger, and then they melt in front of you. I think you can see the pattern forming. The key thing is, you don't have to reload for quite some time. It's designed for close range play, where there's always less skill required for acquiring the target and maintaining it. So aiming is less of a factor, and if you can learn to control the recoil and tap fire for longer ranges, then it feels even better. And while many will argue that my weapon picks are trash and make no sense, yes I've been here before, because the internet is a place to be angry, this gun probably won't be included in any of that. Everyone knows it's damn good, and everyone's been killed by it a lot. But wait, here's another gun, and I haven't switched to the medic class. Yes, that's right, boys and girls and everything in between. I'm giving you two guns per class today. What excellent value for money. Uh, you can repay me by providing a super thanks for, let's say, $100. Or you could subscribe and, you know, like the video. I guess that works too. Uh, it makes you cooler, I promise, but not in a legally binding fashion. This is the Hell Regal. You've probably almost all used it a lot. Let's make it quick then. The Hell Regal is easy to use. It's like baby's first machine gun. Do you want a lot of rounds, a decent time to kill, and the ability to hit people at longer ranges, all with very little skill required? Cool. Hell Regal. I'm featuring the factory variant today. I have previously in other videos talked about the defensive variant, which I do really like, but the classic popular pick is the factory. I have it in gold. No, it doesn't make it any better, but yes, it does help me feel like a king and helps to distract me from the mundanity of streaming this game almost every day, when I'd probably rather be stubbing my toes or throwing my siblings into the ocean, but I don't get paid for doing those things. That said, all of this footage was recorded live on stream here on YouTube. So come and say hi. I usually start at 2 p.m. UK time, which is currently like 9 a.m. EST or about 1 a.m. in Australia. So make sure you stay up late, Aussies, so that you can make me happy with your eyes. Right, medic class. Need to hurry this up, as I said I get this video out this month. This still counts. And I'm supposed to stream today because a grown man has to make a living. Here's the Fedorov Optical. A gun I've used so much that a longtime viewer on my stream started complaining and abusing me for it, as if the free content wasn't good enough. Don't worry, we banished him to the Shadow Realm. So Ted, this is for you, you whiny moppet. The Fedorov Optical is the ugly stepbrother of the Fedorov Trench, like Ted. The trench also being known as the Fedorov that everyone chooses to use, unlike Ted. But I like the optical, unlike Ted. I find it still be very effective at close range, unlike Ted. But also, at mid to long range, the dot sight helps me to be super accurate, unlike Ted, whilst usually utilizing tap firing. Picking up kills that I don't honestly think this gun is supposed to be able to, making the Fedorov a medic option that lets you do pretty much whatever you like, unlike Ted, if you can use it to its maximum capability. Versatile Utility is the name. It's also my middle name, and you can't prove otherwise. So to explain it like you're five, like Ted, Fedorov Optical for aiming down sight, but still decent from the hip. Fedorov Trench for hip firing, but it's still decent from aiming down sight. They're just very good. Use them if you haven't, unless you don't have the DLC weapons. Don't shout at me for featuring DLC weapons, please. I don't make the games. And you can tell I don't make the games because most Battlefield maps are bafflingly awful. 
like Ted. Oh, and there's also the Feder of Degtriov, but like, I mean, come on, really? Okay, next medic weapon, and my god, this is taking too long. Why have I done this? Here's the Farquhar Hill, the Lord Farquhar. The Shrek movie is now about 23 years old, I think. My god, I may as well be ancient at this point. Uh, I actually remember watching the first half of that film about five times on the last day of school each year, and now here I am talking about gun pixels on a screen for a living. Uh, where did the time go, right? How did we all get here? The Farquhar Hill is fun, anyway. It's not a close-range slayer, but it's a bit of a mid-range beast with the ability to pick people off at long range too, and more importantly, some of the skins look awesome. And it sounds great when you fire it. And considering it's now about eight years or something like that since this game came out, how the gun looks and sounds is about the only thing I care about. But you probably want to kill people with it, and that's okay because I can confirm that it does kill people. Uh, if you want some stats, it's a 3 shot kill to center mass out to 54 meters, and then a 4 shot kill from 55. All with relatively little horizontal recoil, so it's pretty simplistic to fire. Give Farquad a go, and watch Shrek if you haven't, I guess. Uh, the kid version of me would be happy that you did. Okay, support class, otherwise known as the class I barely ever choose. These are like my least favorite kids. I still technically love them and look after them, but I don't call them to find out where they are or check their school grades. I just kind of let them live. Uh, I don't have kids yet, and I will be a good father, I promise. Please don't report me to anyone. So kid one is the MG15. Right after this game came out, this gun became my go-to support weapon. Then at some point I stopped using it and basically forgot about it for years. Now I like it again. Uh, I don't know why all of that happened. I don't know why I like it now. Stats wise, it's kind of baffling as to why and I'm not going to dive into the numbers because we've reached the part of the video where neither you or I care that much about it. But the MG15 just works. It puts bodies on the ground and I don't have a hard time doing it, which seems like a great combo for a gun. You know, we're supposed to kill people. It's also got a load of ammo, which we all know by now is something that I like. I do think I also like it because it's a support weapon that's effective without the need to go prone and bipod. I don't particularly like passive play and being limited in that fashion, so the MG15 gets two thumbs up from me on that front. It's not like I won't use weapons that rely on a bipod, but it's nice when I don't have to. Also, my stream viewers and neighbours are probably tired of hearing me shout, PLEASE DICE, as I spend five plus seconds trying to work out why the game won't let me bipod as I get shot in the face. But yes, as we're doing two guns per class, here's the LMG08-18, which I call the Parabellum but with 50% less crazy, like picking Odette Annabelle instead of Megan Fox. So instead of 700 rounds per minute, you have 600, while still having 100 rounds per reload and less recoil to deal with. Four bullets to kill within 12 meters, and five beyond that, a bullet hose that doesn't feel as mental to fire as you might expect, bipod ability when the game decides to let you, option for suppressive fire or lethality, blah 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 blah, big gun kill very good, let's do scout. Let's open this up with the SMLE Carbine. Sweet spot between 40 and 75 meters, so you can one-shot kill to the chest at relatively close to mid-range, whilst utilizing an optical or dot sight. This is just comfort sniping. It allows you to be aggressive as long as you're comfortable with your sidearm. You can easily get one-shot kills at range that don't require much fiddly precision. Also, assist counts as kills are common, pumping you up the leaderboard. I don't like the iron sights on the infantry variant, hence my selection of the carbine. I'm funny about iron sights, and those just don't work for me. But the optical sight makes the gun very potent from my experience. However, if I do want to use some iron sights, the ones that work well for me are on the Labelle Infantry. This is your second weapon for Scout. We race in now. I get a bit of pushback about this gun, but it's my list, so either complain about it in the comments for extra engagement for the almighty algorithm, or make your own YouTube channel. Ted, I like this gun, but it's only good if you learn to reliably reload cancel. By that I mean getting used to exiting the animation of reloading by double tapping Y or triangle or whatever the key is on PC when the rounds are loaded. Because the label has a long reload animation that actually goes beyond the amount of time needed for the rounds to be available. If you can get used to doing that, then you're in business. That is, if you want a scout weapon that has a sweet spot between 50 and 87 meters. Plus, once again, if you want to be aggressive, you better be good
good with your sidearm. Now, real talk, if you enjoy my stuff and want to help me out, you want there to be more videos than there have been over the past two years, you don't really need to do anything special. Just watch the videos and streams when you want to. Chat to me in the comments or on stream, you know, like and subscribe, the usual stuff. It really helps me and I appreciate it. So if you want to do any of those things now, awesome. Thank you. Uh, if you did want to go the extra mile and directly support the production of these videos whilst I'm still trying to stream like six days a week or whatever, there is a new Patreon. It only charges you when I release a video. If I don't put a video out in, let's say, March, then you don't get charged in March and you can pick whichever sort of tier you want. It seemed like the fair way to structure this. Um, also, nothing is paywalled. If you don't support me on Patreon, you can still watch all the content. Uh, the link is in the description. Thanks for any support. Or you can grab a membership to the channel here on YouTube by using the join button and then you'll get a badge displayed on stream and whatnot. And now, just a huge thanks from me to you for watching this whole video up to this point, along with thanks for my fantastic community that continues to keep this channel alive whilst Battlefield is so dead. It means the world to me. I'm still here due to the community supporting my streams. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I'd have had to quit. There's just not enough in Battlefield to sustain a content creator, at least not me, without the community doing it for me. Um, and I'll always be thankful for that for the rest of my life. I truly will. I can only repay you with uh, effort, video streams, uh, interest and kindness, you know, the, the usual stuff. So yeah, especially a huge thanks to the massive supporters. Um, they know who they are. I'm not going to embarrass them. Uh, you guys rule. I literally can't do this without you. I, I can't keep doing this a job without you. You're absolute heroes. Thank you, everybody, um, for the past however many years and for watching this video. Have a truly great day and hope to catch you soon. Subscribe, you wobbly sausage!